Hey, so the, uh, Star Wars role-playing game. Uh, let's get right into it because I know before I used to ramble on and on. And I want to explain how to play Star Wars. And I'm um, starting it up again. So we'll see. Let's, let me explain the books, okay? All right, so you don't have to buy all these books, <laughs> okay? Um, I bought these over a period of, um, you know, whatever, three, four months. Okay. <clears throat> um, all you really need, if you really want to, if you really want to, let's be cheap, and, and budgeted, which obviously is this book. Now, why, why did I pick this one out? It's, it's, it's got all the core rules, everything you need, and it's the Mandalorian type setting. You know, Edge of the Empire. It's, you know, it's the one. It has a bit of Jedi stuff in it if you want, you know, Force users, Jedis. And I'm not going to get all the naming conventions accurate, just so you know. But it has a bit of that in it, so there's enough in there to, you know, to nib nibble on that. And um, uh, it's got a bit, of, a bit of everything in it. Empire, Rebel, you know, the, uh, not the Rebellion, Republic. So that's really all you need is this book, okay? Now, this, The Age of the Rebellion and The Force Destiny are, are the same core rules, but then they focus more on the rebe uh, Republic or Rebellion, whichever, you know, whatever time period you want to play this in. Or this Force obviously does more Jedi stuff, so more info on that, and more, more talents, more, you know, spe specific uh, traits, you know, like in D&D, um, uh, more, you know, stuff that, that you can do as a Jedi, you know. So... so that's what the, those three core rule books are. Now, the, these big boxes here are starter kits. If you want, you can always get, I would suggest, uh, this one. Or if, if you want to focus on the Republic. And I'll explain that. So this one is, this is a great starter. You don't even need these. And you, by the way, you get dice. Um, I've obviously got a bunch of dice. And, but if you get the starter kit, you get a, a pack of dice. And these are like 15, or I don't even, I have to check. They're expensive. Um, so, and, and you're going to need, I have like three, three sets in here already. And so, and I have even additional because of um, getting these things. So you, you, this is kind of a good value because you get the dice. You also get, I would say a two to three sessions worth of, of fun gaming in here. The characters are pre-made. Um, you get the character sheets. They're all colorful printouts. You also get a nice big map of like a Millennium Falcon type ship so they can steal it. And that's kind of cool. Um, and a map of the town, like it's like a, it's like Moss Eisley kind of Tatooine town that they go through an adventure, and you can add more adventure in there. It's you don't have to just do the adventure in here. There's, there, you know, it's a cool little town, and you can add more little stuff in there. So you could, you could um, stretch that out even more. And when you get this, you get a digit. You can go on the digital. There's a digital PDF you can download for an additional adventure. So that's really cool. So this one here really is all you need for starting, and and then you can determine at that point with the with your players if you're going to continue on and then and then get this one you know so this is like 25 30 dollars 25 dollars i think on amazon and i you know if you can go to a local store but it's hard because a lot of them don't really care this anymore um and then this one is like 50 40 40 i'm not sure you know, i haven't checked it but so that's all you need if, if you want to start off now if you want if you care if you think your players really are into like focusing on missions you know like for the republic or the rebellion, you know, which if you want to do the rebellion and then afterwards the republic, you can do this one. It's more like they get missions from their leaders to do things, you know, and 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 so it's more the GM is going to control. Well, the GM always controls the story, but you know, it, it feels more like the a control thing where this feels more like you know, oh my gosh, we're being thrown into a crazy world. This is we have to go do a mission, and I don't have the, I don't have the force. Store kit yet? I think it's, I just ordered it, but I don't have that one yet. This one I, I haven't opened it yet. I'll do a video on that, but it's pretty old. But it's the uh, Force Awakens. Now, <clears throat> whether or not you like Force Awakens, I mean, I I appreciated the effort, you know, but obviously I, I have the same problems with the the story as, as you guys do. Anyway, so there's that. Now, what are all these other books? Okay, <clears throat> um, the, mainly the breakdown is that you will you can buy these and and. Uh, some of them are adventure campaigns, so you know you can get a, uh, another adventure, or uh, or they're a source book. In a source book, the adventure campaigns might be an, ad an actual adventure thing, or it might be like a location, and then gives you information on the, that region. The and then there's also the biggest thing too is they have um, these are for players. They have books that are based on a source book for smugglers. So, yeah, source book for smugglers, and they're very. Um, it's focused on that career. So, if, say if your player chooses to be a smuggler, then they get all kinds of gear, um, 
extra gear things, extra little info, starships here. There's starships, there's gear uh, that they that they could use. And also the main thing is these, these talent trees. And I'll explain those in a minute. Uh, where are they? They're, they're gotta be in here. <clears throat> yeah, so these little talent trees. It, um, and they're basically like traits in D and D, where you you can you, you you when you get your XP, you can buy a talent, and these talents, um, these talents will give you extra like you know extra attack bonus or extra uh, maneuver or whatever it is. I don't, you know, so you can buy those, and they and they're like kind of like spells or whatever. Some are passive and some are active. Okay, so then that's what the the, the all of these um, will have that kind of a mix of. Career books and they, and they get expensive, so you don't want to get these. Um, you really don't want to buy these unless the player really gets into it and they want to buy that specific, you know, like the smuggler source book themselves. So the GM doesn't really need to buy this. Um, and then these ones here are just additional, as you can see, the little green lettering, additional information of those air of those eras of the. Of you know, starships and speeders, uh, dawn of the rebellion. That's that period. So they're gonna have more info on that, like allies and, and villains and, and the setting. Um, and these books are very wordy too. They're 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 almost like reading a, a, a you know a, a book because of you know. Um, but anyway, uh, the game is actually very simple. They just fill it with a lot of info, and it, and it's and that's kind of fun to do and and, and look at. Not, not, and obviously I haven't read ever, all of these yet. And I'm more of a GM who plays my own stuff. Anyway, so now I'm going to get to the rules. So I just want to give you a basic understanding. Again, if you want to save money, if, you, if you're unsure of this game, just get this one uh, for starter. You know, again, a Mandalorian type setting. And um, and then if you really do want to start, pick pick one of the core rule books to, to focus on. And it's based on what your players want. Do they want to focus on Jedi stuff? Do they want to focus on the, Re the Republic, Rebellion? Or do they want to focus on being a smuggler, you know, Mandalorian style setting? That's what. The, so you pick one of these. <clears throat> okay, so let's go over to the desk, and we're going to work on the the player care the the rules. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, I'm going to explain Star Wars how to play Star Wars role playing game. So here is a character sheet that I got off of Legends of the Galaxy website. I don't remember exactly where in there. They have a big page. It's pretty amazing. A lot of content in there for you, so you will be able to find stuff if you want online. All, all the stuff I did, I did edit it a little bit just to remind, or explain to you and, and myself like what all these things are. These little abbreviations I put in here, um, and and shrink them down so they would fit auto fit with the font. Anyway, so how to make a character will really help explain how to play the game. And the characters making in this thing is really simple. Um, it's so for instance, I put twos for all the different, you know, it's like strength, you know, and Dungeons and Dragons, strength, dexterity, whatever. But so brawn, agility, agility is for all the, you know, uh, so, oh, here, let me just turn these all off so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so, you know, these are all the skills and they obviously correlate to the different characteristics of the, of the character. Cunning, willpower, presence. So, you know, if you want to, and let me show you, um, not that one. I'll, that'll, I'll come up that in a sec. So humans here, and, and this is in the core rule books, uh, making characters. Uh, you know, you got the two, two, twos all average for them. The wound threshold. Every, every species, you know, human, Wookiee, whatever, gets a wound threshold plus their brawn for dan or hit points, basically wounds, and strain ten plus their willpower. And the strain comes into play in combat as well. It's just when you get down to zero, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're knocked out, whatever. Okay, so that's what that is. Let me just show you a Wookiee real quick so you can kind of get a sense of the differences here. Rodians, Trandoshan, Trandoshans, Twi'leks. Okay, uh, let's get to the Wookiee. Okay, Wookiees. And they also will have little special abilities. The different races will have little extra little bonus things that they can do. Um, so here for the Wookiee, obviously the brawn is a three. The, uh, you know, one for willpower there. And look, for wound threshold, they start off with a 14 plus brawn. Strain, obviously they're strained, maybe they get tired quicker, so eight plus willpower. And they only get 90 XP. The human gets 110 starting experience points, okay? And they get some special abilities here. They already start off with one rank in Brawl, Wookiees do. So let's just do a human. I'm doing a human, and he, he they get um, 110 XP to start with. And how you expend that XP real quick is, let me turn this off, uh, I didn't uns unspend that. This this character sheet again is in Galaxy, uh, Legend of the Galaxy, Gal Legends of the Galaxy website, and so it's kind of automated. So, for, so you know, if I put this to zero, then all these things with zero will have zeros. But I'm going to put it back to two. 
for a human, average human. So he has 110 XP, that's what it says on the in the core rule book. And what do I do with that 110 XP? Okay, so I can buy, you really wanna start, your characteristics is really important because obviously it gives you all these greens, um, which are the which are the ability dice to make, you know, to roll, roll something. And so you wanna increase these if you can. Now, if you go to three on this, let's just say I go to three, that cost me 30 XP, okay, to start off with. Let's say I wanna to go to four. See, and I get and I get these threes here. Boom, boom, boom. Three dice to, I get to roll. Uh, let's say I wanna to go to four, make them super muscly. I should just do a Wookiee, but I mean, I'm just doing this example. Um, boom, so I go to four, hit that enter. And this should go up to four dice, no? Okay, there, great. See, it went up to four dice now. I get four dice to roll, and these all have um, posit, uh, success and advantage uh, results, and I'll, I'll explain that in dice rolls. So you get four dice, just just with inherent brawn, not even skills yet. So, But this cost me 70 XP. It's three, 30 for 30, four, 40 for 40. That's 70 XP at my, at my start. So I only have, what, 40 XP left. Do I want to spend that on another characteristic? I could probably only get one, obviously. And then for third, so I can get say agility for third for three. Oops, three for thirty. So now I've spent hundred XP. I only have ten left. So I'm going to put it in just for the heck of it. Um, I'm making this guy. <laughs> I'm making him a warrior. Just I'm just keeping it simple. Okay. So what happened here? I'll explain this. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah. Uh, let's just say he's got. I don't, I don't even know what career he is, but you get to choose a career as well, right? So if you choose a career, it'll give you like specific ones of these that are become part of your career. You know, I'm, I'm just, right now I'm just grabbing whatever just to show you. Um, but let's just pretend, or let me just take this one off. Let's just say all I get is athletics. I mean, I think there's like five or six per career. So if I chose, um, you know, a gunner, I would probably get all the gun stuff and then, you know, that one and maybe streetwise and survival. I don't know. I'm not, let's not worry about that, but you, 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 here, I'll just show you that real quick. You get to choose, and it's in the core rule books of all the books, um, let's say Bounty Hunter, and you get these, here's the, you get, sorry, let me just go back to this. So let's just say I choose Bounty Hunter as my career, okay? So I'm a Bounty Hunter. Here are the skills, athletics, perce brawl, perception, piloting, uh, ranged, streetwise, vigilance, okay? So those are the skills you get to mark off as you being proficient in those. Um, then you you can specialize. Every bounty hunter or whatever the other ones are, pilot, smuggler, they still then get talent trees so they can specialize in different... See, here's one, assassin talent tree, bounty hunter. Uh, another one, gadget, bounty hunter with a gadget. So these are free. You get to pick one of these at the beginning, Ah, my throat. You get to pick one of the. Uh, will I cut that out? Edit that out. We'll see. You get to pick one of these talent trees, and then uh, later on in the game, you get to, you can buy uh, additional talent trees if you want. But starting off, I don't I don't encourage them to do that. It's like multiclassing. I hate multiclassing. But anyway, so you get to pick one. So let's just say he does the assassin talent tree. So you then you get some additional skills that may cross. You know, may there'll probably be some cross. Um, some same ones, but whatever. And then you can add those now as part of your proficiency skills. And then then you can spend XP. See, so cost your five, five, 10, 15. And these are kind of like, these are like traits in D&D or spells, um, but they're kind of like that in the sense, lethal, blow, you know, quick strike, stalker, whatever. So you get these to then add. And I, as a player, I would recommend you print these out. Now for the starter kit, you don't need these. If you, if you use the starter kit, it'll have its own uh, character and a couple of different Couple of talents in there. You, can, I think you can use, but if you're starting off with just the core rule book, th this will be in there. You you have to make a copy of it and print it out. You know, and so let's. I, I didn't. I'm, I'm not. I don't. I'm not uh, correlating to the assassin talent tree or in the profession skills. Let's just keep it like this, just so you can see what I'm doing. So what you can do now is. Um, so remember, I spent seventy point or hundred. No, I spent what 70, 30, 100 points on just bringing up these characteristics here. These two. And now I can spend 10 points. I have 10 points left to spend. I can only do, oops, I can do, um, so in your own profession, you get five points, it costs five points, five XP to buy a skill rank. So there, I'm done. 
That's my character. I mean, I'll show you more. But that's really it. That's all you have. I, I spent five and five. Now, if it's not in your profession, let's say brawl, if I did spend it on this, it would be five plus five. So it's a tradition. So it's five. Oh, sorry. This is five. This is 10 more. 15. 15 more. So 30. But, you know, you can only go to it in the beginning. But when you get this third rank, it's going to cost you 15. This is cost 20. And this is 25. It, in your profession. If it's not in your profession, you just add five to each cost. So, so instead of five, it's now 10. Instead of 10, it's now 15. Then 20. Then 25 then 30 okay so that's how xps cost um now what is this what are these what does these dice here do so yeah so here's an example so, so you have four brawl you now get four dice you can roll four ability dice the green ones okay and i'll explain the dice here in a second right after i'm done with this i'll explain the rolling the, the pool of dice um you get four ability dice and they're all positive outcomes now i'm gonna say as a gm what the difficulty is and they'll have negative dice and i'll explain that too but these, these, these yellow dice here are challenge dice. Let me just show you the picture of them because obviously it might be confusing you. Oh, get, nope. I don't even know what that is. Okay, uh, not that one. Where's the other one? For crying out loud, I'll be right back. Okay, so here, am I recording? Yeah. So here are the dice, okay? So these are the ability dice, the positive dice. And this is the profession dice. They replace, not add to. They don't add to the dice. They replace or upgrade the green dice. The green uh, dice are your basic ability dice. And the, the, the yellow dice, the challenge dice, are the upgrade to the ability dice. So you don't, remember, you don't add to it. You upgrade the dice. Okay, so that's what's going on here. So when you have a, let's say, gunner, and I have two skill ranks in it, now... See, my agility is three. That's the, the three is the highest I have versus the two skill ranks. So I only get three dice. So whatever the no highest number is, that's the how many dice you get. Okay. Then the next number, which is, uh, it could be vice, it could be either way. It could be three and two or three and two here. Whichever way, you still only get three dice. So look here, if you got, if you got three dice and it's going to, it's and it's going to be three dice. Two are upgraded. Okay, so whatever the highest number is, that's the same amount of dice. The second number then upgrades them. So three, three. If you have three in, a, in a, either skill or characteristic, you only get three dice. And whatever the second die number is, you get that number of upgraded dice. Okay, so two there. Okay, what if? Okay, so for instance, in brawl, you have four dice, right? Let's say I choose to get a skill rank in this one, which is going to cost me. Uh, 10 points initially, not five, because it's you know, I don't have a, you know, it's not in my career, oddly. But whatever. Anyway, so you get four dice because the brawl has four, but you get one upgrade because you have a one in your skill rank, okay? So do you understand that? You can't, you don't add that, the dice to it. You you upgrade the ones that's already there, okay? That's how that works. <sighs> okay, that one's a little tricky. Um, so now your wounds are based on your species plus your brawn. Your strain is based on your species plus your willpower. And strain is like stress. It's like, it's um, hit in Dungeons and Dragons, hit points re reflect to me physical and strain. But they in Star Wars, they split it. And it's kind of neat because you will get strain from different things, um, secondary results of the dice rolls. And I'll explain that in a sec. And if you go to zero, you're knocked out. You're not dead. You're not going to die from it. You just, you can't do anything. You're still exhausted from, from the strain and stress. And you'll even get that from not combat from other things too um wounds obviously is from combat whatever and you only have so many blah 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 now soak value so you your brawn will soak up some damage and if you have any kind of armor right so if a, if, a, if a laser pistol does um uh three damage and, you, and it hits you and if you have this brawn of four you, it doesn't hurt you you're never gonna get hurt by it you're all tough and you can take that you know little that little light laser pistol um, so the only way a laser pistol with a three wound can hurt you is if it gets um, if it actually gets a critical, and then it'll do some critical damage to you. So there's that. Uh, um, but a lot of pistols, I think, are more than three, like five or whatever. So there's that. Uh, defense, you don't get any initially. That's all based on armor and you know maybe a trade or some other special abilities or or gear that you get as you progress. And generally, the number if it's if defense if you have an armor that says defense two. 
it, it, it reflects both two and two here. Okay. And the only way this would be differentiated is if you get a specific gear or armor that says, you know, defense range two and not melee. Okay. And then you can add that that, that way. Um, force pull. I'm not even sure what the heck this means. Um, I, I, I'm not going to focus on the Jedi stuff, but I'll do it basically, it's real simple. Yeah, you do get, if you choose, to, if you want a character in the game to have a sort of force powers, Jedi powers, not it's not Jedi, but force powers, they can get one point, one die roll, I'll explain it later, but they can get one and then they can get a talent tree. But then that's the talent tree. You don't get to do other talent trees, I believe. I, I don't even know the exact details on that, so I'm not going to go totally into that. But you, or here's the force rank. You could get one for free. If you you know decide narratively in the game that that you we can have a Jedi or not Jedi but Force user character, you do get one for free, and I believe you get a talent, the, the generic talent tree if you want. Um, but that's a whole nother video or whatever. So let's just go with the basics. And I'm really focused on not Legends of the Galaxy. That's just the that's not part of the role playing game. That's just part of the website. But Edge of the Empire, the Edge of the Empire version, which is uh, it's behind me. But you know you saw it in the previous video or the the, the one I just did of the books but edge of the empire you could play this game without worrying about force and you don't need any you can even ignore all of these okay you now obligation is something that they do obligate you as a gm to do for the characters but i i'm going to skip it i i'm actually going to skip it for the, as a beginning uh gm and players i would skip it because it, do, it does add a whole level of, back, you know, like Han Solo with Jabba the Hutt. It's that thing where Jabba the Hutt keeps coming after Han Solo because he, he, Han Solo owes him money. That's an obligation thing. So you so that right there is a, it's fun and I get why they put it in there and it, it is awesome. But if you're a beginning GM playing this, I would don't even worry about obligation. It's, it's just adding another level you don't really need to deal with right now. Because you're going to have a lot of ad adversity already, okay? And to me, the whole obligation... The whole total duty, which is the for the rebellion, age of the rebellion, and this is for the Jedi thing, and I think it's for Jedi thing too. All of these come into play when you and the players know the game and are committed to a campaign. Then you can use you start using those because those are like little factor things, and you know, in each each session you roll like say the percentile die, but and then and then if you roll below their obligation rating, then you have to implement a, an obli. Um, you know, the job of the hut, Greedo, someone's coming for the, the, the character, the player, the character. Um, so that part to me, you, you should not worry about and take that out as in the beginning. Because you're going to be doing that anyway. You're going to be creating that kind of element on your own anyway. You don't even need the obligation to make you do that. You want to do that as a GM. You're probably going to add that adversity, adversity challenge in there anyway. So... Again, I would not worry about duty, obligation, morality for the the Jedi part of the horse. You know that that'd be cool, I think. But but again, you can play those. You can role play those without really having to worry about the the game rules. But that they put them in there, I think, is still a good thing because you know it's it's uh, it might help out for anyone that really doesn't want to focus on that or do that. So and these are also these right here are conditions. Like you know, if you get staggered in a and it'll say um, the weapon or the gear. Or the critical will say you, you're staggered. And so that lasts usually, generally, if it doesn't say how long it lasts, it'll last till the end of the next your next turn, the, the one that gets staggered. And staggered is basically, you can move, but you can't fight or do any action. You can you can flee or run. or uh, And then immobilize is the opposite. You, you're, you're under a crate, you can't move, but you can shoot. And um, disoriented is, you can do whatever you want, but you have a disadvantage, a setback die. You have a setback dice. Die. Setback die. Okay, so... Um, that's what that is. It, encumbrance. Encumbrance is cool and very simple. I like how simple it is. It's five plus your bronze, so I have a nine. Um, and so weapons and armor will, will have an encumbrance rating, and they're, you know, two, four, whatever. So you can carry up to nine encumbrance um, with your gear and stuff. So that makes it, so that's cool in the sense that it makes the characters have only a couple items, not a bunch, not, a, you know, like D&D &D where you got all these, you know, I ignore encumbrance in D&D, &D, so it's got all this stuff. So in Star Wars, you should have only a few things, and that should be that's cool. Uh, so that's how simple this really. And really, I think you're kind of done. I mean, let me look around here. You know, you can. Um, that's really how simple this is. You know, if I can, I can obviously spend some uh, ranks in something else and get better at deception or or coordination or cool. Uh, and and you should definitely familiarize yourself with all these skills as a GM. You really got to familiarize um, what they do, what their options are. And I'll go. Let me go to the dice pool. Real quick, I could go. Well, actually, let me go back down here. 
Okay, so the talent tree, you don't need this really, this page if you if you get this character sheet thing from the uh, Legends of the Galaxy, because you're gonna want to just print this out and use this. Just you know, and then whenever you buy one, you check it off, you know, for the character. Um, that's what that is. Force powers, I know the Jedi thing. Yeah, this is all that ob obligation. You don't need all that. If you're starting off, you know, that's if you want to go into more in depth. But again, I, I as a GM would rather control that myself instead of having too much of this controlling it, these numbers. Uh, but I do, I understand why they put it in there because it really does play into the storylines of Star Wars. So here's, uh, this This sheet here is, is good because it does give you your armor. Um, see the melee, deep, the soak value of your armor. So that takes away from wounds. The, the defense and of melee and range, that's good because that, that adds setback dice and our difficult uh, disadvantage dice or setback dice to the whoever's trying to hit them. So it makes it harder to hit them. Encumbrance, that's the side of a heavy and HP doesn't stand for hit points, it stands for hard points, I believe. And that's you can add, you know, upgrades to your armor, or, you know, or whatever the ship. Everything has all the things, many of the things in Star Wars have hard points, so you can upgrade or add things like a telescope. Or armor, I guess you would. I know what I don't know what what the stuff you could add to it, but you could add something to it depending on how many numbers it has. Uh, weapons. So the weapons. So the damage of a weapon will be here, like a, I don't know a laser rifle or whatever does a five. So if you do successfully hit, you do five wounds of damage automatically. You can add add based on your success, success numbers. Uh, you can add uh, the, on the die roll. You could add more to the five. Uh, if you get a bunch of it. Uh, other symbols, these advantage symbols, you can then have a crit, which you know does a, a additional damage stuff, and or stagger, or disorient, or whatever. Encumbrance has the size of the weapon, and of course it has hard points. So that's, so that's pretty, pretty um, basic there. Uh, and then of course you can get some cybernetic stuff, which gives you special abilities, you know, like you know, and of course gear. And that's kind of you. Don't, it's funny how considering encumbrance, how much gear are you going to be able to hold? You know, <laughs> not, not you know, not that much. Um, but anyway. So yeah, then that's the talent thing. Uh, okay, that's just that. Okay, so let me go to the dice and explain the dice. Did I close the... Seriously? No. I closed... Okay, I'll be right back. I don't know how I closed all those. Okay, so these are the dice. These are the dice. Uh, ability dice are the green ones here. Challenge dice... No, challenge dice is the red one. Uh, triumph dice. These are triumph. These are the boost. So these are all the positives. This is the difficulty dice that tells you how um, what rating of something is to to uh, uh, to that the player has to deal with. I'll explain in a sec. In challenge dice, this is like bad. This is like oh, you know, there's a Sith in the you know coming at you or whatever. Uh, and these are the setback dice. These are the ones um, little little minor setbacks. You know, foggy, uh, muddy. Um, um, but I'll explain that. Okay. So let's just say a character is okay. Let's look at the character actually. All right, let me go back up to the first page here of the character sheet. And, and again, and granted, you don't necessarily need all this stuff like the weapons and the you could just make your own. And I believe in the original, yeah, like down here. See, so you could just put them right here if you only, especially if you only have a few things, which you probably only have a few things. You can just put it down here if you want. Um, which you really only need the first page. Okay, so anyway, um. Let's just say, so here, look, I want to shoot someone with my with my pistol, my laser pistol, right? So I only, ah, I only have one rank, and I obviously have agility, which is two, so I have two dice, and one rank will upgrade it to a challenge. But let me, so, thusly, when I roll, I will have uh, one of the, you know, one of these, the ability dice, and one challenge. So these two dice right here, that's what I'll roll. Now, what's the difficulty? Let's say, uh, well, for... For combat, very simple, very simple. The, the GM just says, okay, you're, um, if you're engaged, they have a blade, they're going to stab you, and you only have a laser pistol, right? You can shoot them, but you have one setback dice. Is that right? No. You can shoot. I, I know this is going to be tricky, but let's just say this is what I roll, right? Now, if I was shooting someone up close, it would be one dice. That's the difficulty. That's it. So I have a pretty good chance of hitting them. But if I'm if I'm engaged with them, I should. Oh, someone's calling me on my phone. Holy moly! I'll be right back. Okay, so my I just got a phone call, so I'm a little thrown off. But wait, this is my um, and I'm using my iPhone by the way to record. So 
Okay, so this is this is my shooting. Is I have the one ability and one triumph. Now, shooting um, up close or engaged is only one difficulty. It's only one difficulty. But if I'm I'm using a laser pistol, right? That's that's not good up close, you know. Ah! So um, so I would have to add a difficulty one difficulty dice to that to hit him. Now, if I had a, a, a dagger and he's a has a dagger, then I get um, well that's brawl. Um, Little factors here. That's brawl, right? Yeah, that's bra oh melee. Sorry, that's oh, 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 for me. Okay, uh, I put put my laser pistol back down and I pull out my dagger because that's four dice right there. Now I don't have a uh, an additional you know upgraded triumph dice, but that's okay. Four, I prefer the four dice, so I'm going to use a dagger against them, and uh, I'm going to get four of these. There's only three here, but I'm going to get four of these, and plus the difficulty is only going to be one. Because it engaged, which is obviously melee, and close, which is, you know, with a few meters, uh, is um, is one. Um, sh so engaged and short is one difficulty. Medium is two. And long is three. Okay? And those, by the way, are narrative. Engaged is melee, up close, blah, blah, blah. Short is like in a cantina. It's right, you know, y'all are just fighting each other right in there, shooting at each other in a cantina. That's all short range. Um I would say short range too is like out on the street right there, just short range. It's all close. Medium to me is like maybe a block away. They're a block away or up on the building. Okay, that's medium range. Or in a sand people's um, campsite, fighting in amongst the the tents. That's probably medium range shooting or whatever, as long as you're not melee engaged. And then long is I would say up on the cliff from the sand people's or in a city building to another building, way, you know, a few blocks away. That's long range. Okay. So and it's narrative. There's no you don't have to worry about measurements. Just kind of, and when someone wants to move, you know, obviously from short to medium is probably going to be one maneuver, but but short to long would be two or three maneuvers. And you can and you decide. You know, you can decide based on where they're at. If they're up on a building and they got to get down on the street. Long range, I would do four or five turns for that, maneuvers for that. So that's just just you know you can just set those um, up in a narrative sense. So you don't have to worry about measuring like you, you know the five feet or anything like that. Okay, so that make keep that easy, keep that simple. So that's how combat works. Now the results um, are. Um, let me pause and just do real quick about weapons. Okay, so I'm just looking at the weapons here. A light blaster pistol has a damage of five, a crit of four. So it needs four. Oh, I, I didn't. I gotta explain these uh, threats. If you get four threats, I believe it's threats. Uh, let me just double check and I'll get back to you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm still new at this too, by the way. Okay, so yeah, like a, um, a light blaster pistol, ranged, light, whatever. Oh, it's a ranged weapon and it's light. Uh, damage five, critical four. You need four of these advantage dice, which I'll results right here, which I'll explain r r just next to uh, to initiate a critical. And there's a critical table like one, that you roll a percentile dice one to hundred and it gives you critical. So so you can get a critical, uh, but you need to get four of those, which is kind of hard to get. Um, so the blaster pistol or light blaster pistol does five damage, you know, and a lot of armor will soak up two, three. So it'll, you know, there's a chance it only do like two or three wounds per shot. And range is medium, so up to medium, so you can't do long. Uh, encumbrance is one. Hard points two, so you can upgrade it with stuff. Uh, price three hundred. Rarity four. Special it has a stun setting, so you you know switch to stun. Um, so so all these different weapons will you know I'm looking at the chart in the in the core rule books about different weapons and what they can do. So um, so let's go on to this is for combat and for skills too. And skills, by the way, rolling the same thing type of things you know successes and failures. If you if you get enough of these successes, you succeed. And obviously, if you get a failure, you fail. Um, these are now are separate. The this is um, advantage, and this is threat, and they're intertwined. They're in they're not. I'm sorry. They're in the intertwined in the dice, but they have different results. Success and failure do its own thing. You add and subtract and see which one comes out um, for that. And by the way, if you do get additional successes in, in, in the outcome of the dice rolls, that'll add to your wounds as well. So for, for combat. Um, th now, threats and advantages are separate. You add and subtract these until you see the final result of what is left. How many advantages are left or how many threats are left. Now, for, for combat, that that will affect give you a critical if you get enough of them. Uh, if you don't get enough, you know, the, your GM could give you a, a, an extra boost die. These are positive dice. Uh, they're small, you know, a little small. You get a 
you could possibly get more advantages or one success or whatever. And then, of course, some blanks. No negatives, but you can get just that. Um, and plus, oh, a single whatever. You so you so if if you do get some of these advantages in your resulting dice pool, you can use those either for a critical or you know maybe an extra boost die on the next turn or or give yourself a little defense. So if they shoot you, they they have a they 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 have to setback die to hit you. So little things like that. And keep it simple. Keep it running quickly. You don't want to have to you know constantly describe what you get out of this advantage. Now, if you get a threat, you could either take off strain points from your, you know, just, just take a strain point. Um, if you get one threat or a two, two, two threats, take two strains. If you get, <clears throat> if you get two threats, it could be that your weapon is out for a turn or broken, depending on the quality of the weapon. Now, if um, if you get one of these despairs, I would say your weapon is destroyed. Now, the ch this is a challenge dice, and that will come into play if you're going up against really, you know, higher level kinds of stuff and and that'll switch out one of these dice depending on the situation um and at, at in the beginning you probably won't use this very much um so uh, that's for for advantages and threat dice when you roll you can get you know um you can get these as well Whew! okay that same thing with skills let's say i'm trying to um here do deception i only got two ranks of green ability score Two ranks there. Uh, that's all I got. And let's say, I, but two, I'm just going up against a um, a Gamorian guard. So he, you know, he probably only has one difficulty. So versus my two, to try to persuade him to get by him or something. Well, what if there's two of them? Well, I'm um, then I would say two difficulty dice. You know, and then my versus my two. What if my character is a twi my my other friend is a twilock and she's dancing in the street? I give him an extra boost die to help me out. You know what I'm saying? What if it's really crowded and there's a lot of things going on? You know, it's a market. I would give myself another boost die. What if um, there's a secret agent, you know, or a couple of the people in the market are part of, you know, Jabba the Hutt's crew? I would add a setback die for, you know, for my role, for the player's role. And, you know, let's say the, I'm, the player is doing this. I am giving him this difficulty because two Gamoran guards and uh, a couple of agents are running, walking around as well, or other guard, you know, guards or whatever for Jabba the Hutt or whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever the, whatever the, it's it's narrative, so you can kind of mess around with those, those, those things. Okay, so that's what all these dice are. There are positives for rolling and getting positive results, whether it's a success and failure or whether it's a threat or advantage in, in a narrative sense or strain or, you know, the secondary results. Uh, this one now is a, it, it's used for a couple different things. It's, it's for non Jedi stuff, non, well, it's force, but non, you know, Jedi fighting because that they use these as well, but for just the game, um, you do use this. Every player gets to roll this dice once and you add up the, uh, good, good and dark side, um, light and dark side, I don't know. Light and dark side destiny points, and that becomes your pool of destiny points for that game session. Let's just say there's they all roll and you know they get some this and this. okay. Let's say they get this right here. They get three whites and uh, three goods, three lights, and two darks. So that's five total. So now the players can use the the good ones like advan like an inspiration in D and D where you get to add it to a roll or upgrade this or do something or you know what i mean it's kind of narrative but you get to say i want to use a destiny point to add to my die roll or or to re-roll or or to you know what i mean like some thing and of course the gm can use the dark side points to do some to ah that's probably when this comes into play especially when he feels like there's some turning point or whatever and he really wants to challenge them so he could spend one of these and add it to their replace one of the difficulty dice. So let's talk about the two Gamorian guards. The, the player's trying to persuade them. I've decided that th th I'm gonna use my thing here and add one of these to here and they and they just are more aware, they're, they're, they know that, you know, they're determined uh, to get you guys, you know. They don't want, you know what I mean, the Gamorian guards, and they don't want to let you pass. They already know about, they've heard about you through some voices, you know, or whatever. So they, so I would upgrade, I would spend one of these and upgrade this to this. Now, I the player can't use 
once I spend one, it, it goes to the light side. So the players can then, in proceeding turns, not in the same turn, because you're not, you know, duh, 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 duh. but in next turn or the next turn, they can then spend it and use it for themselves. And it goes back and forth like that throughout the game. So spend them cra crazily, wisely, whatever. So that's how that works, okay? Now this, oh, by the way, this is an automatic crit. So if you're, if I'm using uh, my pistol, my range light here, and I get, I, you know, I roll these two dice here, and I, and of course, if one of them, I get this. That's an automatic crit, by the way. You can use that for your, it's a success and a crit, and it and induces crit. And then same with skills. If you can roll, if you have a challenge, a proficiency die, and you get this, it's a success, extra success. Okay. Whew. I, is that it? I, I think that's it. I think I've explained how to play Star Wars. I, th I think that's that's really it. You know, you you know, um, yeah, that's that's kind of it. You know, you just you got to just run through it and play it. And I would seriously suggest. Oh, these GM screens are kind of neat too. I have a GM screens, um, and they come with a little mini adventure, each of them. So that's kind of cool. And uh, they got like all the you know the handy charts. You know, for you to look at the dice and the... yeah, difficulty settings. Um, let me get a little closer here. Well, let me switch to the big cam. You know, so you know they, they kind of help explain the difficulties and what they are. What what they are? Uh, range band here for shooting. Um, the, the range, you know, difficulty like a, if you're engaged. And using a pistol, you can get a plus one, you know, purple difficulty die. These are the dice here. These are the symbols and what they represent. Uh, results and what you can spend it on instead. Because this is the threat and adv yeah, advantage and, and triumphs in combat is the good stuff. Oh, and then threat and despair is the bad stuff. As to, um, you can see these these two right here. So this is like, you know, for um, in combat, this, this isn't the success or failure success or failure, this is the, the secondary um, results. And then same with this, secondary results, but bad stuff. Um, so here's the weapons, you know, like I was talking about the light blaster pistol and what it does. But most characters will have that written down and then your N your uh, NPCs will have theirs all written down as well. Now, just so you know, minions like storm, they're called minions, like stormtroopers and all that, don't have strain, just, they just have wounds. And, and even those mid-level, uh, um, um, villains or adversaries, adverser, adverse, whatever villains, don't have strain. Only the really top, like Darth Vader's and the, in the, you know, the the, the 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 bosses or whatever, will have strain that you can deal with. And, and spaceships. And by the way, spaceship fight vehicle combat is very similar to. They use wounds, they use threat and armor soaks, but they just times ten. I mean, they're all one and three and five or whatever. But if, if a player was to shoot at them, they wouldn't. And it was a one, they would need to do a ten wound to, to actually wound them. Not one, you know, but anyway, uh, but that, so it's very similar, similar and very simple like that, you know, and narratively speaking too, even the ranges are, are like that, like, um, but on a vehicle or, you know, spaceship scale. Um, so there's that, oh, item qualities. Yeah. So this is all the like, you know, like, like for instance, st some weapons will do stun, you know, and some other things there. Uh, critical table, obviously you're going to need that. That's very relevant. Um, you get a critical. Maneuvers. Okay, so this is the things you can do in combat right here. Um, vehicle critical. So this is when you do vehicle damage. Uh, silhouette comparison for for ships. Yeah, size differences and the, and then you know for hitting them with a the difficulty because obviously it's going to be harder for a star cruiser to hit a Tie Fighter or X Wing. And they're gonna, you know this, that's the silhouette comparison thing. <sighs> yeah, this is all spaceship stuff. So that's cool. So okay. So that's what that is if you, you want to get the GM screen. You don't have to. Um, but I do want to show that the starter kit, let me just go real quick. Yes. The starter kit uh, is really the best. You get your, you get your dice. You also will get little, t oh, I'm ripping it up. You'll get tokens, right? I'm not going to pull this out. Oh, might as well. Um, they, I guess they've kind of come off a little bit, but you get tokens. So that's really handy if you just want to use these and they correlate to the adventure. And let me just pull these all out real quick. Let's see. 
you get the beginner game rule book. You get the rule books for the beginner game. You know that, and you, and like I said in the um, previous, or the, when I explained the books, you get um, there. You get like um, it's a three to four sessions. You know, especially if you get to the, the, download the digital one too. And this is the adventure book. So it's, and it's it's simpler, you know, and and it, and, it, and it does want to run you through. Um, it does want to run you through the basics of the skills and the combat. So. That's it. Oh, and there's the maps too. Where are they? I must. You know, what I pulled them up. They're in the um, in my notebook. But they have a cool map of a Millennium Falcon type ship, and of the the space the little po spaceport where it's at. So you can do a little combat in there. Um, and then the um, and the town itself. Yeah. Let me show you real quick. Ah, where is it? Okay. The ship. Alrighty, here's the map of the Millennium Falcon ship. It's in the spaceport. So that's cool. You know, good starter thing. And and the, obviously the tokens will work there. You know. And then and this and obviously if they, they at the end of the mission, they, if they're successful, they're oh, if they're successful, they'll get the ship. And they also here is really cool. Moss has a map of so they can play in that. You know, just where they need to go, what they need to do. And this one, these are good size battle maps for the uh, characters. The um, uh, main control room where they'll deal with some people and have a little shootout. And the cantina where they'll probably have a little fight with Gamorian guards at the beginning. Okay. So that's a cool, you know, little starter thing. And um, I'll just show you something else for yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done explaining the game, but I'm just going to show you some more stuff that I'm working on. I think I've done it in another video. But I have made minis, paper minis. They're fold-out kinds. And I looked for all of the images of toys on... Take that out. Huh? Oop, look at that. They're all just the action figures. Then I did different size rinkers on there. And those dudes, I forgot what they're called. Bantos? Whatever. Uh, sand people and little dog dudes and sand crawlers. Small, I did a, you know, like a smaller one. Obviously, I'm not going to do the bigger one. So I did these, and they're all little paper minis, and they're little cutouts. Um, you know, you just fold them. Very simple. They're the right scale, and they're on my Patreon for free. They're free. I'm not, I'm not you know, it's not my not my drawings. I didn't draw them, and they're for free if you want to go on my um, Patreon. Storytelling wrong. I plan on doing a lot more Star Wars content, you know, original stuff, uh, as far as art maps and um, some creatures. But, um, and I got a couple on there, but not much yet. But I'm kind of, you know, I'm figuring, you know, since The Mandalorian's coming, you know, is, is growing, and they're going to be doing even more shows, I, I'm going to, um, that's bugging me. I'm going to, whatever, I'm going to really, I figure that's going to be really nice to influence her, and I'm going to do some game sessions with this stuff. So I will be making content for this um, on my Patreon. But there's a lot of those, all those paper minis there are there for free. They're public. And you can just grab them if you want them. Yes, it's going here. Yeah, this way. In the front. I could stop the video right now. Because I'm kind of done explaining. Gosh, these boxes are kind of iffy. Okay. All right, so I hope that that was a good, I hope that really explained to you the game, at least the combat and the skills and how, how those work. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you around. I'll see you on YouTube. All right. And may the force be with you. There you go.